Hi, welcome, Hope Savara here, and I believe it's day 19 of our 40 days of yoga on the mat, and today has been quite a day for me. Um, I normally teach Sunday mornings, but I didn't today. I had some time to prep for a workshop, and then I taught a three-hour workshop on yin yoga to 30 amazing yogis. And I'm feeling kind of tired. <laughs> After that, we did some things at the studio with my husband and fed my kids. And I'm committed to getting to my mat every day personally. And so here I am. And so this kind of leads me to the inspiration for my mat today. I think every day will arise new challenges. And when we think we've mastered certain challenges in our life, and we may have, we'll find that new ones arise. And now the old me would have looked at those types of things and been really frustrated and really defeated. But understanding yoga has allowed me to see those things as growth opportunities. And so wherever it is that you're in your life right now or even on your mat, know that as you kind of get over one obstacle, there's going to be something else waiting for you. There just is. It's part of life. And we can either see the glass as half full or half empty. We can either be upset and frustrated, or we can say, okay, this is a new opportunity to grow my skills, to look outside the box, and to become the best version of myself possible. And so as you come to your mat, and we find that it's like, I'm doing all the work, and why are my hips still tight? Or I'm doing all the right poses. And maybe you are, but as you evolve, different things will arise things that have been dormant in our body for a long time, physically, mentally, and emotionally, start to surface as we peel back those layers. Sometimes even in our personal lives, we go to school, we do all these different things, and then we get into our career, we get into that area of your life, and we decide, this isn't what I want to do. Because you've changed. You've grown. And that's okay. So today I want you to take from your practice that it's okay to change. It's okay to look at that obstacle in front of you and say, what is this trying to teach me? What do I need to learn from this? And then overcome it, whether that's changing your career path, whether that's selling your house, whether that's deciding that you no longer want to eat meat. Whatever it is, be willing to explore the possibilities of what's ever in front of you today. So today for me, I'm feeling a little tired. But I'm feeling a little energized now knowing that I'm committed to my mat and I know that my practice will just unravel as I go. But I'm going to be working with a foam roller today. You'll also need a strap. And if you don't have a strap, a necktie works really well. If you don't have a foam roller um, and you don't have something like an ball, why don't you grab out a tennis ball? And so a tennis ball will re work really well. You can at least work with the different areas of the body. Um, you won't have the full length of the foam roller, but you'll definitely get some benefit to the myofascial release. And so let's just start, start out by rolling out one of our legs. And so hop up onto your tennis ball or hop up onto your foam roller. And using a little bit of a push-pull method, roll through the tissues of the body. So by turning my body, a little bit towards more of the hamstring, I'm going to access a slightly different area of the tissue. And if I go more directly on the side of my leg, my IT band, I can definitely feel that tension. And so depending on what kind of a foam roller you're using, I'm using a soft white foam roller. If you're using a denser foam roller, I would not recommend rolling at the joint points. So the skin is very thin there, and a really hard foam roller can really bruise that tissue. And so now I'm just kind of rolling through my glute. You can kind of spin backwards a little bit. If you'd like to, cross an ankle over the opposite knee and roll through the hip socket. This can be a practice all on its own. Rolling doesn't replace stretching, but it definitely feels good. So if you're feeling a little bit like a gravel driveway, it's a good opportunity for you to start rolling on a regular basis. And just experiment with the upper glute, more medius and minimus. Up look towards your lower back more. And you can also roll down more towards the sit bone, more the gluteus maximus. Nice. And then let's switch to the opposite side. I'm going to totally flip myself so you can still see me. I'll just move my strap here. And then hopping up onto your foam roller again. It is very common that you feel more asymmetrical. And so inhaling through the nose, exhaling through the nose. You can roll the full length of the leg. 
and just be willing to kind of twist and turn a little bit and get all those points of the side of the leg that best serve you. Rolling is a great way to warm up for stretching, especially if you know you're stiff. And it's also a great cool down. If you're a runner, you definitely need to have a foam roller. Make sure you go towards the knee as well. So I'm going to move my foam roller down a little bit and get all the way towards my knee point. Inhale through the nose, exhale through the nose. Maybe you can discover one side harboring tension in a slightly different way than the other side. I definitely noticed that in my legs. And because I'm on the carpet, my mat's just shifting on me, so sorry about that. Shifting a little bit more towards the quad, maybe noticing a little bit more gravel like. And now let's actually come onto the quad. So I'm going to turn to my forearms and just a nice push pull with the quads. Turn your legs to access different aspects of your thigh muscles. Hold on one second here. There we go. You can also experiment with bending the knees. And just feeling a little bit more through the patella tendon down near the knee. By turning the legs internally or externally rotating them, you're going to notice, again, different areas of the quad. Remember, quad means four, so there's four heads to that thigh muscle. So if things like hero pose are challenging for you, this is a good warm-up for that. All right, nice job. So I'm just going to readjust my mat. And then finally flip over onto your back. And if you're using tennis ball, if you have two of them, we'll lay one on each side of the spine. You can kind of scooch on your back to create some release. If you have a foam roller, lift your hips up, use your hands, and just push and pull against your back body to release the spine. You can roll higher. You can roll lower. You can rock to one side or the other. I'm actually going to position my foam roller at about the mid rib cage and just arch over it, create a nice stretch through the belly. the head, a couple more good rolls. Nice job. All right, so let's move the foam roller. I'm going to readjust my yoga mat here. And grab hold of your yoga strap. If you don't have a strap, um, a, a towel, a long dish towel, or a necktie will work really well. Lay yourself back and just bring your knees into your chest. As you give yourself a nice hug, Brace your arms against your shins and just feel your sit bones kind of wiggle in your glute tissue. Notice if one is a little stickier than the other. And just create that awareness. Bend your knees and place your heels far enough away so that you cannot touch them with your fingertips. Let's just start out by inhale, arching the lower back. And then exhaling, as you drop the lower back in towards the floor, try not to squeeze the glutes, but feel the pelvic core in the lower part of the abdomen really contract and hollow in. And then inhale, arch the back. And exhale, relax your shoulders. Inhale. This time bring your arms overhead, extend your spine. And then exhale. Inhale, really plow your shoulders down into the mat, and exhale. Again, we're not glute squeezing. We're internally feeling that contraction. One more time. Inhale, and exhale. Nice job. Release your upper back. Neutral out your spine. Now grab your yoga strap and lasso up your right foot. So as you lasso up the right foot, keeping the heel above the hip. Now if you notice your lower back plummeting into the floor, 
try to create a little curve in your lower back. So we're just trying to bring neutral. If you need to, slide a small rolled hand towel underneath the lower back or even a dish rag to remind you to keep that arch. Flexing through the foot, just get into the Achilles and calf. A couple deep breaths here. You may feel that all the way into the heel or even the arch. Inhale through the nose, the knee stays facing your nose. Exhale, we're never locking the knee back. Rather think about more extending up and just keeping the thigh muscle lightly toned. Now with one hand on each side of the strap, since the top leg here, draw down on the inside strap so that the ankle rolls out, almost like if you were to walk off a curb and twist your ankle, your ankle is rotating externally. It's a really great runner stretch. Inhale through the nose. You may feel this radiate all the way up the anterior tibialis, which is a muscle that lines from the ankle to the knee. So inhale through the nose and exhale through the nose. Stay here as long as you need to. We're going to roll the foot back, re-lengthen through the heel, and exhale, gently guide the leg towards you, only to the point where you can, again, keep the lower back slightly arched and keep the thigh muscle in line with its socket so the leg's not moving out to the side at all. How close you draw the leg is not nearly as important as how much you can keep the pelvis from curling up off the floor. So sometimes it's an illusion. To get the leg closer, we just lift the hips up and we really haven't moved much of anything, especially in the pelvis. Inhale through the nose and exhale. The ankle is going to be kept neutral. Even just a slight turn of the foot, we can kind of change that sensation. But just make sure that your body isn't just being thrown in a direction because of restriction. Inhale through the nose, relax your shoulders. And if you're using a strap, hold the strap relatively close to the foot so we're not straining in the shoulders and in the neck in order to hold the leg upright. If you'd like to extend your opposite leg and anchor it into the floor, so we're creating kind of a dynamic stretch from one hip to the other. Now slightly slide the leg off to the side and bend your knee and press your thigh muscle towards the floor. Use the strap for as long as you need to. You may find that you can grab your foot and draw the thigh to the floor as you anchor through the straight leg. Keeping a little contraction through the belly, try to keep the heel above its knee. So we're really working through the hamstring. Inhale through the nose, use one or both hands or use your strap, exhale through the nose. Sometimes just that sensation of really being present on your mat is almost breathtaking to feel at peace. Even if your body feels stiff or tight, going to that place. And then re-lengthen the leg, grab hold of your strap, relax your shoulders into the earth, keeping your lower back again slightly arched so you're in neutral. Notice how both hips feel very even on the floor. You want to keep that Hold the strap with the opposite hand comfortably close to the foot and bring the leg across the body as you push the hip down into the socket. It's like stirring a spoon in a big bowl but not moving the bowl. Your pelvis is the bowl and the leg or the femur is the spoon. So we're moving that femur head back into its socket as we cross the midline. If I take, since this is my right leg, if I take my right fingertips, I should not be able to slide my fingertips under my glute and sacrum to touch the midline of my body. I'm constantly pressing the outer hip into the floor. Keep the heel relative to its hip line, and again, only going over as far as the IT band, as far as the glute, as far as the deep hip rotators will let you. You might be here, and that's fine. Inhale through the nose and exhale through the nose. So this is different than let's say a twist where you let the whole hip lift and you're going to be more in the spine. This is much more about the hip socket. Inhale through the nose and exhale. Press your femur head back into the hip socket. 
For me, I feel this from my glute muscle all the way through my hamstring and outer leg, even into my heel. Inhale through the nose and exhale through the nose. Relax the jaw. And then back up to center. Rebend the knee back into happy baby. Take hold of the foot or continue to hold the strap. If you need to, use head support. Anchor out through the straight leg. Slight arch in the lower back. Draw the thigh muscle to the floor. slowly release that leg just gently hug the knee into the chest and slide the leg out to meet the opposite full body stretch let the back arch and then arms come back down again bend the knees both knees into the chest just gently rock side to side and then back to center Drop your feet to the earth. Just find a nice neutral pelvis. Broaden the upper back. Lasso up your opposite foot now. So for me, this is my left foot. And remember, we're not locking joints. So keep the knee slightly bent. You can keep the knee dramatically bent and still bring the leg in. Even for me, I'm still feeling that stretch. And so my left hamstring is just a little bit tighter. It was the hamstring that I had sciatica on for a very, very, very long time. Um, and also my hip that was rotated forward for most of my life. So this leg is always my work in progress leg. So a nice little trick if this is your tighter hamstring or your hamstrings are just tight in general, hold the strap with the opposite hand. Take now your left hand, if this is your left leg, and roll the thigh out externally without letting the femur bone actually rotate. And so you might just find a little bit of a hardier stretch. And also that will help you from keeping that hip hijacking up. So you can hold that as long as you'd like to, especially once we go into the hamstring stretch. But for right now, let's just work on flexing through the heel and reaching, really stretching the lower leg, the calf, the Achilles, the gastroc. Let's add that little ankle rotation. So I'm pulling down a little bit more on the strap on the inside and resisting with the strap on the outside. Keep your breath flowing. Sometimes yoga kind of forces us to cultivate patience because we live in a society where we want everything right now. And many times we fall victim to the tabloids and sales pitches where everything is fast and now and quick and instantly. And most change doesn't happen in five hours or in a pill. Change often takes a lot of work and a lot of internal work. And so now again, I'm going to draw down the outside of my left thigh, watching not to let my lower back arch, or sorry, drop into the mat, draw the leg in. So my left leg, this is about all I can go, and I am really feeling an intense stretch. So very different from my right. And I might hold this one just a little bit longer just to give my left side a chance to even out. Now if you know your hips are tighter, keep the opposite knee bent. That just won't create as much of a dynamic pull on your pelvis. Otherwise you're going to extend the leg and just very kindly anchor it into the floor. Inhale through the nose and exhale through the nose. Looking at my top foot, if I see my foot curling or turning, and it's kind of done it on its own, I'm going to guide it back so I can again redirect the stretch to the back of the leg more appropriately. Keep your breath flowing.
My left heel has been a little sensitive the last day, so I can really feel this through my calf and through my Achilles, so I know this will bring me some relief. If you are someone that suffers from plantar fasciitis or from major Achilles restrictions, um, definitely thinking about working with stretches like this is going to only benefit you. Let's slide into that happy baby now. Leg shifts off if it's your left leg, off to the left slightly. Draw your thigh muscle, not into your belly, but next to your lung and rib cage. Using the strap possibly, or one or both hands, move the thigh muscle to the floor and your heel away from your groin. I'm going to drop my strap so it's not hanging in front of me. Inhale through the nose, anchor through the opposite side of the body, feeling a little bit of a stretch across the pelvis possibly. Exhale through the nose. Relax the shoulders. And if your mind has wandered away, make it a point to come back. I probably would be sitting in front of the computer right now, so thank you for getting me to my mat today. I know I will only feel better. All right, re-loop your strap, and think about keeping your thigh muscle a little bit closer to your chest as you extend the leg. Remember what I said about the hip. Roll the hip of the upper leg down, and that really, wow, kicks it back into my hamstring for me. Cultivate patience. Try not to rush through it here. Now re-elevate the heel back over the hip and make sure you recreate that small curve in the spine. So my hips are staying level. One is not picking up or tipping at all. Think about dropping your femur bone into its hip socket. Now as you cross the center line, not letting the hip roll up. So this isn't the twist that we are always used to. This is a totally different stretch. This is more of a socket and IT band stretch. So keeping, if I would stick my left fingertips under my glute, keeping my glute pushing against my fingertips as I come across, this is a big difference from my right leg. Inhale through the nose. Try to keep the heel within range of its hip. You may be feeling this down the side of the leg, in the glute, in the very depth of the hip socket, all the way to the heel. For me, it's all of the above. <laughs> Inhale through the nose and exhale through the nose. I'm just going to press a little bit more my hip back and now I can really feel that right next to my sacrum and in my glute. For many of us, our hip sockets are very sticky and so the pelvis and the leg kind of move together rather than move dynamically. And so let's try to create as much space as we can there. And as we age, we often confuse stiffness and lack of mobility, lack of lubrication in a joint for arthritis. Even confuse inflammation for arthritis. Another good reason to continually come to your yoga mat. Do that happy baby, bend your knee, draw your thigh towards the floor, I'm going to remove my strap, but definitely hold on to the strap if the hands don't comfortably meet the foot or ankle. Anchor through your straight leg as you draw the bent leg's thigh into the floor. drops down, hug the knee into the chest, extend the leg, full body stretch, turn your ankles, 
And then both knees come back into the chest again. Let your sit bones again move. And then drop the feet to the earth, bound angle. Let your knees drop open. Now let your back arch and draw your arms overhead. Let's take five good breaths here. Just wiggle your legs side to side, free the hips. Fill your body with fresh new breath. Exhale, cleanse any distraction, restriction, pain, or discomfort. for help, bring the knees together and into the chest, and then roll to your side, come to seated. As you come to a seated position, move your strap, and come to a cross-legged. Sitting nice and tall, inhale, outstretch your arms, and exhale, drop your left hand to the floor, relax your shoulder, so the fold of the elbow points to the middle finger. Bend the top elbow, palm faces you, and extend your top arm. Maybe even bend the elbow to grab for the bottom side of the head. So you're feeling a really good stretch the side through the side of the body, anchoring your right hip into the floor. Slight turning of the torso can change the stretch into the back body, side body, or front body. Go where it feels most relative for you. Inhale, the bottom shoulder should not be jammed up, but very relaxed. Now take your top arm, keep reaching over to the left as you turn your torso. Hands come about shoulders distance. Use your right elbow to pin against the left knee. Inhale, lengthen, your pelvis stays turning towards me as you turn towards the top edges of the mat. Exhale, lower as you continually pin the elbow. A really big spinal stretch. Breathe calmly. Close your eyes, take yourself to a place. As relaxed as possible. Sometimes tightness can easily make us feel anxious, and so just try to be mindful to that. Roll up and slowly to the center. Take your time, that can be a really deep stretch. Let's try the opposite side, just relax the shoulders, outstretch the arms. Now bend your right elbow. Remember, drop the shoulder, the fold of the elbow points with the middle finger. Take your top arm, do the same thing now, cactus arm, palm faces you. Shoot your arm out, or feel free, bend the elbow, grab the head, and then you're reaching through the elbow to stretch through the latissimus dorsi, the lower back, to stretch through the side lung, and all the way into the underarm and tricep. The bottom forearm may or may not touch the floor, that's not relevant. Really, again, relax your shoulder and open your left side body. Those subtle changes may or may not be necessary to find that sweet spot. Inhale through the nose, breathe into your left lung. Exhale through the nose. And now release your top arm, reach and turn your torso. As you turn your torso, pin your left elbow to the top of the right thigh to help turn the spine, get some length, and then possibly start to bow, gain some depth. You're using your hands kindly on the floor, I'm gonna use the word leverage, to slightly leverage your turn to create a little bit more of a potent twist in the lower spine. Relax through the left shoulder, breathe as you turn.
slowly unwind back up. Nice work. We'll work with Hero's Pose and Supine Hero. So if you know your quadriceps and pelvis is a little bit stiffer, I highly recommend grabbing some blocks, blankets, or even some couch pillows in order to prop yourself to gain more support. Coming to the top edge of the mat, turn your calf muscles open and allow yourself to sit back. Now if sitting back, you're kind of floating in kind of mid-air, slide something under your backside. That stress is all taken into the knees. If you need support for your ankles, your strap or a sock work really good to bring that back under the curvature of the ankle. And some people just have deeper set joints and this is really uncomfortable. For a long period of time though, I wouldn't recommend sitting like this um, because you can really do some damage to the nerves and the ankles. But we'll only be there for a while, so if you find that, definitely prop and support that. As you slowly start to come back, lift your pelvis and tip your tailbone towards your knees. So you're just turning your pelvis so that you get more of a stretch through the quad and through the patella tendon and through the hip flexors. Coming to your forearms, feel free to rest on your forearms for as long as you need to or prop the curve of the spine appropriately. You could also use your foam roller if you find that you need a little bit of lower back support or even mid back support and you don't have something nearby. So if you're using the foam roller, it'll definitely work for that. So again, slowly coming back. If you find that you and the floor are friends, and then slowly rest to the mat. Any major lower back pinching or compression, lift the hips and again tip the tailbone towards the knees, especially if you're just looking for a deeper stretch. If this feels really good for you, lift your hips and slide something under your pelvis when you're laying flat on the floor and that will also expose the groin even more. Drawing the knees slightly towards the midline will also increase the stretch. Inhale through the nose, either hands to the heels, arms overhead, or even supporting behind the head if necessary. Inhale through the nose, and exhale through the nose. Know that wherever you are with Supine Hero is relevant and appropriate. If you're near a couch, you could lean right back over your couch. Do not force yourself back into a pose like this. I do poses like this a lot. These are some of my favorite postures to work with. Sometimes when I'm talking with my husband, um, I'll just go into a pose like this in the living room um, or into a hip stretch. And so know that the more you work with these, the more the fibers of the body, especially the deep fibers of the body, will become more accustomed to that space. So just take it easy and take it slow. Inhale through the nose. And exhale through the nose. At any time, any numbness, anything tingling, anything hot shooting or sharp is telling your body that it's time to come out. Please listen to that. But know that with this pose like this, the sensations may shift and change. So as you start to get to the deeper tissues, the more fibrous tissues, the more plastic-like tissues, you may notice that the sensations become more intense or less intense. So try to have a good gauge as to what your mind is telling you is tight and what your physical body actually is. Nice inhalation through the nose. Nice exhalation through the nose. Relax from any tension and just keep your breath moving thoughtfully. Now listen carefully to come out, either move yourself back up with your forearms or if you're on the floor flat, just release one leg at a time. And then eventually make your way onto your spine, moving any props that you have. Turn your spine, wiggle your sit bones, maybe circle your legs. Roll the ankles and come into a full happy baby. 
grabbing hold of the ankles or of the feet from the inside or outside. Press your sacrum into the floor as you press your thighs into the earth. So we're trying to turn almost like our tailbone down because the hips are curling up. Inhale through the nose and exhale through the nose. Now either stay here or extend your heels out into a nice little straddle. You can hold from the underside of the leg and that will give you a little bit more weight bearing. Or you can grab hold of the feet. Now if your feet are just simply too far away, the goal is not to grab the feet. The goal is to feel a good stretch and anchor your sacrum into the floor, which will take a little bit more potency into the groin and into the hamstrings. Breathe. Flex into the heels and let the legs open with gravity in your breath. bend your knees, bring your heels together. It's like a bound angle. Draw your feet towards your belly. Let your lower back lengthen. Shoulders drop back. And release your feet down. Lengthen your legs one at a time and come into Shavasana. Inhale deeply and exhale completely. back to me now. Draw your knees into your chest. And gently roll to your side. Use your top hand for help to lead your body up and come to a seated position. I want to thank you so much for your time, your energy, and your effort on your mat. It's amazing what we can accomplish in 40 days. Until I see you again, which I hope is soon. Namaste.